Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 1. In the last episode, we had one hell of an intense card game between Keiichi and the rest of the club, in particular between himself and the club president, Mion. And after that, and everybody uh, went their own separate ways for the day, Keiichi decided to go to the uh, illegal dumping site by the damn construction site to see if Rina was still there trying to uh, rescue the Colonel Sanders statue that she found. Lo and behold, she was there, so Keiji decided to uh, try to help her get it out. They were unsuccessful, but what we did find instead was uh, some news was some uh, artic magazine articles detailing more about the murder that occurred at the uh, damn construction site a while back. And the details are certainly a bit chilling, to say the least. Al along with... Uh, Along with being very mysterious and very mis yeah very mysterious, especially considering how the uh, last member of the uh, group of people who murdered the uh, construction foreman seemingly vanished without a trace. I also uh, made some. I also made a note on uh, how was uh, how the alliance that uh, within the village that formed against the uh, construct against the construction project of the dam was named after a particular marsh that uh, has connotations with um, some underworld stuff yeah very descriptive i know and i think that pretty much covers the gist of it honestly so I have no idea what's going to be in store for me when I hit continue, but I imagine something interesting has got to happen. Especially as I continue to delve deeper into this weird mystery surrounding the damn murders. The function of this school as an educational facility is very questionable. Our PE class is exceptionally disorganized. The only things we do together are the warm-ups at the start. The teacher isn't even there after that. That's very irresponsible. All we do is play together. No helping it. Everybody's a different age or gender. The only rule that we ha that we have to the only rule was that we have to stay on school grounds while exercising. All the little kids were gallivanting and van vanting about. Well, they certainly are being active. They might be getting plenty of exercise, but the board of education probably completely forgot about this school. Sorry to keep you waiting. We're all together now. What shall we do today for P.E.? Alright. We have all our members gathered now. Now then, class representative, what shall we do for P.E. today? What shall we do? Mion harumphed and crossed her arms haughtily, surveying the area. Explosive power and endurance. There are no friends in the world of sports. Everyone is a rival. Well, there are such things as friendly rival rivalries, so... I'd say that counts. The only thing you can trust is in... You can only, the only thing you can trust in is in your own body. What the heck do you mean by that? You really read too much manga. I quipped without missing a beat. And so, we'll be taking a lesson from history. The tried and true king of all outdoor melee events. Let's play tag! It was quite the adorable choice to make after playing it up so much. She could probably play she could probably eat eat up eating a bowl of she could probably play eating a bowl of cereal make it sound like something truly extraordinary. Just what I was hoping for. That Thunderhead Keiji Sen shall be the first one to be it. I won't be beaten. I'll try my best too. You can't beat me. Why are you guys all so into it? If there's anything you should learn, you should know by now, I think, Keiji, is that these guys take 
most of the crap that they do very seriously. Third rule of our society, you must partake in the game, enjoy it without question. See what I mean? Then, this counts as a club activity. Everyone smirked at each other. They all seemed pretty confident. I'm a man. Physically, I should be able to keep up with any girls my own age. Regardless, Mion and Mion Satoko looked like they were aiming for victory, and Rina was looking at me as if pitying my disadvantage. Fine. Tag, I'm in! My yell echoed across the school grounds. These were the rules. Anyone who was able to evade being tagged before the bell was a winner. But we didn't switch who, who was it. The ones who were tagged by it also became it. So the number of people who were it could increase exponentially. The endgame would become a hellish siege. They call the version we're playing here Zombie Tag, you see. I see. Anyone infected by a zombie turns into a zombie. Why do you make it sound so scary, I wonder? I wonder. As soon as I catch Reina, I'm going to tear out her entrails while she's still alive! G -g 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 gross Keiji kun That's gross! Rika-chan placed her hand on Rina's head as she panicked. Don't worry. Before Keiji gobbles you down, I'll eat you up gently. You're gonna... You're gonna give her a nosebleed, I think. Rika, that isn't comforting at all. Both Mina and I nodded deeply. So the first it. How do you decide who's the zombie? Rock, paper, scissors? Well, I'm, I think I know how it's going to uh, go, basically. You're the new one here, so you're the zombie. Fresh meat. Well, it is class time, after all. Let's decide by answering questions. I'll ask the questions, and the one who isn't able to answer is the zombie. But then that, that completely prevents you from being zombified. If you if nobody can ask you a question. I have no idea which grade level they're coming from. What does the Japanese word Roku mean? Okay, I know the word, but I don't remember what it means. Huh? I was bewildered by the sudden question. Mion repeated it. So you need to answer. What's Roku in English? Um, it's six. Okay, so it's a number. How about kus Kusoshita? Socks. What's the third last letter in, in the alphabet? The Eng which alphabet? English? It's X. Okay, English. What does Seibetsu mean? Of course I know what that is. Se... Satoko cut herself off before finishing the answer. You're the zombie, blondie. I see. It's quite a lewd question. You're an adult, aren't you? Of course you know what, what it is, right? I certainly do. Of course I know. Then go ahead and say it. That you know. That. What does that mean exactly? Oh, Satoko looks like she's in trouble. How cute. Don't take her home. It's a crime. If I didn't nip it in the bud, she really might have tried to take her home. Mion's pursuit was relentless, making Satoko stammer. 
Now then, go ahead and say it, nice and loudly. What does that mean? I do know. I do know. Se that means a person, thing, idea, action, or event which has been previously indicated in context. Huh? Ah. All of us were a bit surprised by Rika-chan's unexpected answer. I guess I am a little bit too. You're certainly well read for a, ch for a child your age. I see. Well, it certainly is what that means. That could have been awkward. I wonder what I would have done in Satoko's position. Probably get ticked off and just blurt out you know what at the top of my lungs. Now I wish that he did that she did pick you. I wouldn't want you as an en I wouldn't want you as an enemy, Mion Mion Sonazaki. Thank goodness you were born a girl. If you were a boy, you'd probably be a perverted asshole. Women can be perverted assholes too. It appears I have no choice. Unfortunately, I, Satoko Hoju, Hoju, shall assume the role of the zombie. I shall eat everyone! Seems like she's raring, raring to go. All I must do is count to 100, correct? Some jerks skip numbers while counting to 100. So you can start chasing after you solve this problem. Whoa, Keichi-kun! Give her a simple one, okay? One-fifth of a cake, one-sixth of a cake, and one-seventh of a cake are all on a plate. Okay. Oh no! There are no common denominators?! Satoko grabbed a stick in a panic and began drawing a cake in fractions on the ground. If Satoko, who can eat one cake in 60 seconds, eats all of them, how many cakes are left on the plate? Just as I finished giving the word problem, Mion shouted. Ready? Go! On Mion's signal, everyone but Satoko scattered. Heh <laughs> Keichi-kun, that wasn't a problem at all, was it? Satoko had already lost the moment she started working it out. She's eating it all, so of course there's nothing left on the plate. You're mean. Everyone dashed off in the direction they thought was best. Knowing the lay of the land, they probably headed right to the best spots. It was obvious I was at a disadvantage. At a time like this, it would have been more effective to go along with those train and survival skills. Like Mion, for example. The fact that I didn't realize it at the start of the game probably hurt my chances. Glancing back over the school grounds, I saw Satoko just rising up to start. She was really, really mad. <laughs> she got tripped up on such a dumb question. I stood at one of the corners of the school. I had clear sight lines in two directions, and would probably have a good response time if any zombies started closing in. For a time being, I caught my breath and focused on what I was trying to think during club activities yesterday. Now think calmly, Keichi Maybara. If I was it, what would I do? Increasing my numbers would be the shortcut to victory. Then going after the weakest player first is the obvious plan of attack. Meaning... ME! You heard it, ladies and gentlemen. He's the weakest link. Now then, where could Keiichi Sen possibly be? I shan't let you escape! But of course. What would be the best method to track me down? Footprints or smell? Or maybe some type of trail. If I could craftily hide my tracks, then there would be no trail for Satoko to follow. But I was no detective. 
Would I even be able to do that kind of thing in an amateur game like this? Probably not. Tomata Okamar Okamura. Have you seen Keichi san recently? What the heck? Do zombies hunt the prey by asking nicely where they went? Apparently this one does. Tomata-kun and, and Okamura-kun pointed to the location where I was hiding. After, after confirming she was headed in this direction, I abandoned my position. It wasn't easy to hide myself with all those little kids running around as they pleased. It was becoming even more ob it was becoming more obvious that I was at a disadvantage from not being familiar with these surroundings. If that's how it was going to be, then to confront this intelligence gathering zombie, I just have to counter it in a similar vein. I approached some girls playing with a ball. I'm sorry, but could you relay this message? Tell Satoko Ho Hoju that her parents are at the gate, please. Messed, messed, messed. I can't tell if they're trying to say mis message or massage. No, there would be an A at the beginning, so. Message, message! <laughs> okay, okay. I don't think I got enough sleep today, if I'm confusing message for massage. My own damn fault. I stopped the girls as they turned to run off. Wait, don't go yet! Also, take this one to me on Sonazaki. Tell her that the teacher is calling her to the gate. <laughs> I am quite the schemer, if I do say so myself. If things went well, then Satoko and Mion would run into each other at the gate. It would put me at a disadvantage if more people were it, but this is Mion we were talking about. She'd figure out a way to escape. But that was just fine. As long as it bought me more time. <laughs> Dance for me, Mion and Satoko! In the palm of my hand! Such a ham. Having my fill of playing the, the con man, I looked for a place to hide. If you think about it logically, I only, I only bought myself a scant amount of time. It might, it might even come back to bite me. Once it became apparent I'd started spreading false information through messengers, I could end up being the recipient of one of those messages. Satoka would probably ask the messengers to help her look for me. That would mean... There'd be more zombies than participants in the game! The virus that was brought about my, by my mischief could cause an epidemic. All my classmates would transform to zombies. And would only be searching for me. This tactic... This tactic might backfire horribly. While trembling at the thought of the imp impending dawn of the dead, I began searching for a safe house. I found a shed by the incinerator behind the school. There better be nothing nasty in there waiting for me. After climbing up the roof, I held my breath. It wasn't a bad place to hide at and to hold out. Not only did I have a good line of sight, but if necessary, I could jump off in three different directions to escape. It was getting rowdy down there. The lower grades were running around below the shed. Maybara san isn't around. Is he over there? Nope. Where is, where is Keiichi san, I wonder? His dad is at the front gate. That was definitely a lie. The word gate, the same one I'd used gave a hint of revenge. So Mion was behind this. I was still keeping one step ahead of the game. I felt bad for my underclassmen, but they'd have to search until the school bell. But what if your dad actually is there, though? Hey, hey, do you know where Keiichi-san is at? His mom suddenly got really sick. A message from Ibarra san They said his house caught fire and he needs to come to the gate. A jumbo jet fell on top of Maybara, Re Maybara residence. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. The police have come to question him. Anything goes now. They say he enjoys peeping into bathrooms. 
How? Uh? Is it true that he's is he true that he's going around every night stealing panties? Probably Satoko's doing these particular rumors. Who are they talking about? I already wears panties on his head and smells them and stuff. No way I would do that! I heard that class representative Mion was a victim too. What? Oh boy. You're taking you're taking it, hook line and sinker. So is you're doing Mion! Calm down, Keiji Maibara. This is Mion's battle tactic to flush me out. Just hold on. My underclassmen thought about it logically. They would all they would know it's all nonsense. These are grade schoolers you're dealing with, man. But small kids don't think about things logically. Exactly. To them, all those things were true. So they all chuckled together while looking for me. <laughs> I win, Neon. It's my victory! <laughs> Wiping unrelenting tears away, I felt intoxicated by my own victory. Did you hear? I heard the new transfer student, student May Barson, is really a perverted person. <laughs> the cost of being Neon had too high a price. Ha! Huh. Oh. Someone passed below. That's. Reina and Rika chan. Uh-huh. Rika-chan, you're still okay? I'm getting by somehow. Uh -huh. It seems Mi-chan is it as well. Mion? Couldn't be. She become it because of my little strategy? This confirmed that Mion was behind this relentless message war. Then... This wasn't good. We finally got away from Mi-chan, but Satoko-chan... She's... Satoko is searching around the pipes, so we should be safe here for a while. This could be another ploy that they're playing against you, for all we know. For all we know, these two are also it. Upon hearing that, I breathed a sigh of relief. While Raynan was slumped on the ground, breathing heavily, Rika-chan has started creeping up to her. Rika-chan doesn't normally make noise when she walks. But it's strange. Couldn't be. Whoa! Rika-chan? What is it? What is it? Huh? Don't worry. I've never seen Rika-chan smile so creepily before. You coming closer? Why? Rika Chan isn't a zombie, is she? Don't be scared. I'll be sure to eat you gently. No way! Rika Chan, no! Eek! Reino is pressed against the wall, and Rika Chan lurched forward with both arms out, just like a zombie. And you're gonna click come into their come to her rescue and fall into their trap. Aren't you? Rena quaked with her back pushed up against the wall. It was quite a surreal scene of horror. Like one of those zombie breakout videos you'd see. I think you mean outbreak. At that moment, Rena's eyes met mine. Kichi kun save me! Zombie Rika-chan turned 180 degrees, exorcist style, and glared at me. Found him! I see K-chan! Mian popped out from behind a cinder block wall around the garbage dump, also seeing where I was. My position was only just it was only advantageous. My position was only advantageous was when there was one zombie. Being surrounded was not was not as good. You said you located Keiichi San. I could tell that Satoko was rushing my way. It seemed that Rika Chan had let Reina escape, 
and now she was bearing her fangs in my direction. Urgh. Ooh. Come on down, K-Chi-K-Chan. The three zombies circled the shed, moaning curses. You guys are scary! Too scary! I wonder how Keiji San's guts taste. Keiji San! Keiji, I want you to become one of us. Someone please save me! I saw Reina apologizing to me from across the schoolyard. An apology. Sorry. Leaving me for dead. Reina! I leapt off the roof out of fear, slipping as I landed. Satoko and Rika jumped on top of me, and after straddling me, they tickled me all over my body. <laughs> stop! Stop! Gah! Fool. So this means Rina is still left. There isn't much time until the bell. Damn you, Rina! dare you? Leave me for dead! The feelings of a zombie. I understood how vengeful ghosts with lingering regrets felt. It's sad. So sad. But Keiichi is one of us now. It felt like I'd been bitten by a vampire and was now one of their thralls. It was a strange feeling, being welcomed over to the side that pursued me. Zombie tag is quite profound. This is no time to postulate. We must capture Reyna. The principal is walking down the hall. The bell will ring soon. To devour Reyna. I, who have been turned into a demon of vengeance, need to use any means necessary. Toss the Toko her way. Use her as bait. Except I wasn't just a zombie. I was a master of the night. A vampire! Using the same trick that I tightened the noose around my own neck, I used my classmates to further my evil designs. I gathered up the lower grades from around the school grounds. Everyone listen! Reyna's in big trouble! All of you, please look for Reyna! It's a bigger problem than a jumbo jet crashing into your family's house? Oh yeah, it had turned to that, hadn't it? Mion whistled nonchalantly, trying to avoid the blame. Yeah, it's not even the same league as Jumbo Jets! What fell in Reyna's house? It was a space colony! I was expecting a T-Rex. A space colony? Yeah, it's a really big disaster. Everything in a 100 kilometer radius was obliterated. But that's only the prelude to this tragic tale. This is the beginning. The start of war for independence by the, prop the propaganda palatine of Xeon! The lower grades were dumbfounded, their eyes like saucers at the grand turn of events. What will happen? Will the Terran Fe Federation lose? If things go on like this, they will! Only one person can defeat the Red Comet! That person is Reina Ryugu! The lower grade students all gulped. It seemed I made them fully understand that the fight for Earth was lost without Reina. Now scatter, comrades! We must find Reina! My comrades in the lower grades let out an enthusiastic cheer and dashed off in various directions around the school grounds. Hmm? There was still one person who hadn't gone. But... I thought even the Terran Federation's impulse wave diffusion diffusal cannon didn't work on the Comet Empire. Are you all talking about like some sort of anime series I'm unfamiliar with or something? Manga? You're close. 
That's the wide variety of those comments. The reason it didn't work was because they didn't know the weak point. Of course, Rina knows their weak point all too well. Yugu-san is amazing. Satisfied with that, he also rushed off to look for Reina. It does seem like there are some promising up-and-comers among the youngsters. Little K-chan's abilities. This old man knows them better now. I didn't really feel like she was complimenting me, but whatever. Really, though, how exceptional, Keiji san This looks quite promising. If we have this many, we can win! With this many, we will win! I was thinking that Keiji would have been a better no nominee for the initial zombie. Rika chans words stung a bit, but I'd let it slide for now. Not even Rena would be able to escape the entire class. As a result of everyone's thorough search, Rena was finally cornered in the back of the sports equipment shed. You're all scary! Keiji kun too! So scary! It was probably. It was probably. It probably was scary being chased all around by the entire student body. All the lower grades closed in on Rena saying she was the only one who could save the world. What are you all saying? I can't control a mech! Reyna! How could you leave me for dead? Are you ready to pay for it? I'm sorry about that, Keiji-kun. But I didn't have a choice. Do not resist. Let yourself be devoured. Let's all be together. Now, Reyna, say your prayers. <laughs> Reyna had stumbled onto a mat, trembling, with tears in her eyes. I closed in. Associating the situation with a similar, particularly immoral one, made my pulse quicken just a little bit. You pervert. Satoko and Rikachan were both wiggling their fingers. They probably wanted to tickle Reina. Reina, wanting no part of what she knew was about to happen, went stiff with fear. Keiji kun, you wouldn't do mean things like that like everyone else, would you? Would you? I wonder. Uh. Now then, are you ready? Okay. So long as it's Keiji-kun. The face she made as she resigned herself to her fate made my heart skip a beat. I believe that Keiji-kun won't do horrible things to me. Ugh. Body won't move. There had to be some sort of anti-zombie mantra. The second my sense of reason chimed in, the beast inside me died instantly. There was the bell. Game over. You lucked out. Yay! I did it! I did it! I survived! Yay! Yay! Yenipur pranced around merrily as if a curse had been broken. <laughs> so daylight broke in the nick of time, and the evil zombie army disintegrated into dust. And so the heroine survived. Well, that's how it goes in the movies anyway. Except when they don't. What are you postulating about? This is all because Keiji-san was dawdling about. Punishment is required. I was subdued by Satoko and Rika-chan, and once again sensed to death by 100 tickles. Yeah! Forgive me! Yeah! 
Then the award for surviving goes to Reina Ryugu and Mion Sonozaki. Yay! I... what? I thought you were a zombie. Huh? Michan wasn't a zombie? Omi pretended to be one. They say you need to deceive your allies for you can deceive the enemy, you know. Bullshit! You cheated! Me on you little! Yeah, yeah. Hurry up and charge, alright. Don't be late for the next class. Let go, Misatoko! Rika Chan! Ah! Having my fill being terrified to my core by club activities, I solemnly swore I would have Mion crying for mercy next time. You all act like a bunch of grade schoolers. But I mean, hey, whatever ha helps you have fun, I guess. After arriving home, I quickly made preparations to head out once again. I had agreed to meet with Rena to, to Rena to dig Colonel Sanders out of that mountain of treasure from before. Maybe the third time will be the charm. Maybe this time you'll actually get him out of there. Mom, do we have work gloves? I need towels, too. Aren't they in the shed out back? The towels are by the sink. Alright. Now I was all ready. Looking at me, my mom stared quizzically. What's going on, Keiichi? Where are you headed to where are you headed to in that getup? If they come to dump again illegally, he'll be buried completely, and it'll be impossible to dig him out. And if that happens, Raina will undoubtedly go after the Colonel Sanders in front of the fried chicken place in town. A bit of excavating. So my classmate doesn't become a criminal. Well, don't be out too late. I wonder what she's thinking. Like, you have, you keep strange company, son. Mom returned to the kitchen with a puzzled expression still on her face. Cutting through the woods as a shortcut to the dam site, I ran into someone. Photographer guy? Yep. It was Tomitaki-san. Probably taking pictures of wild birds again, with that precious camera of his. It couldn't be all that it couldn't be that all he took pictures of was handsome young men in the twilight. Hey, long time no see. Keiji kun, right? My due regards. I expelled the rude imagery from my head and greeted him without inciting anything. By the way, was that girl an acquaintance of yours? He was talking. He was probably talking about Reina. Why do you want to know? Guessing by the way, Tomitaki san was shaken up. What was that all about? She was walking around with an axe, and she was laughing with a huge smile across her face. Really? Is that all she did? That was Rena, without a doubt. It's probably because she could take it home today, so she couldn't hide her excitement. Now, somebody remind... Well, okay. Remind me again why she needs an axe to dig out to Colonel Sanders? I mean, I can understand if you're, like, chopping up, you know, giant tree trunks or something on top of something. You're trying to just, you know, chop it up and make it smaller, but... How exactly is an axe supposed to help with a bunch of garbage? I hid myself because I thought it might be dangerous. Should I call the cops to be safe? Well, it would certainly be quite the spectacle for a girl of her age to be roaming around with an axe. Tomotaki-sen's reaction was the epitome of logical. 
It's fine, it's fine. Just leave her be. She's just wandering around looking for more victims. Tomotaki-sen was alarmed by my crass response. Well, it's probably hard for normal people to understand Reina. I'll just toss a bunch of BS out there. If she were to be killed out here, she'd probably be the one to do it. Try not to snoop too much around here. With a condescending smirk, I started off in the direction of the dam site where Reyna was waiting. Before I got too far, Tomotaki-san abruptly called out to me. Keichi-kun, is that meant to be a warning for an outsider like me? Uh, I didn't mean it that seriously. I did try to make it obvious, but... <laughs> I'll try my best to be careful. How seriously are you taking them, I wonder? Leaving only those words behind, Tomotaki-sen turned around and left. I didn't really mean to call him an outsider. I wasn't really implying anything when I said that. It was only meant to be a joke but it felt like I'd said something bad. Keiichi-kun! I was waiting for you. Let's try our best today. I understood what Tomotaki-san was trying to say. Somebody gallivanting about while waving an axe around certainly would seem dangerous. You should cover the axe with something when you have it in public. It's not good to carry it around out in the open like that. Seems that I lost it. So there isn't one. You lost the axe? Where? Thinking about it, there really was no need to try to keep up appearances. Everyone in Hinamizawa probably already knew about Arena's eccentricities. She's probably the only person who could carry an axe around Hinamizawa and not be considered suspicious. Ah well, let's finish this today. If we bust through this last beam, we should be able to pull him out. I've got everything I need. Leave it to me. Okay. I took the axe from Rena. Okay, you didn't lose it. And made my way up the unstable slope. Just wait, Colonel Sanders. Keichi-kun will save you. Where would you even put the thing, anyway? Alright, get back. I'll finish this one in one- I'll finish this in one go! Saw the flack rang out throughout Hinamizawa, as if the job was being done by a lumberjack. How was? How is it? Think you can do it? If it looks too hard, you don't have to strain yourself. If I can break through this, then we'll be good. I have plenty of power today. I can do it. But his adversary was more formidable than I expected. First of all, I never used an axe before. During a school camping trip, I had wanted to split the wood, but lost that rock paper scissors and wasn't able to do it. Because the spot where I was standing was so unstable, I soon became tired. I decided to take a break. Rena had already spread out the tarp and laid down some tea and sweets. I'm fine. I'm almost there. I'll make sure Rena can give Colonel Sanders a good night kiss tonight. Yeah. Thanks. Giving Colonel Sanders a good night kiss. Oh. Hey, Mr. Sanders deserves some love too. 
Come to think of it. Reyna, you're a transfer student too, right? Where did you live before? I asked her nonchalantly while drinking tea. I thought she lived here all her life. Hmm? In Kanto. It wasn't as rural as it is out here, but it was still out in the countryside. Why did you move here? To Inamazawa, I mean. You know, this is pretty far out in the boonies. Why did you move here? Does that have to do with your dad's work? Dad said he wanted to move out, uh, move out to his studio. He'd been saying for a while that somewhere deep in the mountains like this would be perfect. Studio? Is your father an artist or something? He paints scenery. Seems that twice a year he opens a gallery for the stuff he does. When he started, his works were displayed in an industry plaza in Tokyo, but now they're exhibited in the uh, Mukahari Ma Messe. I don't think I said that right. He's determined to have them displayed in the Waterfront International Ex Exhibition Hall. That's amazing! Let me see them next time. I was too embarrassed to tell her that I didn't really know what kind of pictures my father painted. Well, eventually I would. I picked myself up while giving some vague answers. But you transferred in the middle of the semester, didn't you? Wasn't that a hassle? Not really. I was getting bored of this city anyway. I was trying to get answers out from Reyna, but I ended up being the one giving out all the answers. I was just about to say, you, you haven't really answered his question about why you moved here. With a bit of a wry smile on my face, I grabbed the handle of the axe and head back to the work site. The air grew colder as the sun slowly set. The Igarashi began their song, as if to tell me to stop and head home for the day. Just a bit more. Today, I would end it. When I first started, I chatted with Reyna as I worked, but now I didn't have that luxury. hoo -ya! Little... Damn it! I had swung the axe countless times today, just like this. Contact. Shards of wood splintered. The assailants butchered the victim's body with hatchets and pickaxes. I recalled that passage from the tabloid. One hit with something like this would smash someone's head in. Axes and pickaxes are not meant to be swung at people. Ever. With one last swing, the beam cracked apart. The weight I put behind the axe only split through the beam, but smashed the statue's shoulder as well. Well, shit. The arm came off with a sickening sound. It clattered down noisily, stopping my feet. Well, you'd gone and done it now, my friend. You killed Colonel Sanders. I hope you're proud of yourself. Ah. Uh, what's the matter? Are you hurt? S sorry. The figure's arm. I broke it off. Oh, that's all? I thought Keiichi couldn't hurt himself. I probably had a really guilty look on my face. Reyna said that without a hint of dismay as she smiled. We just need to tape it back on and put a coda over him. Nobody will even notice. I see. Let's pull him out then. Can you get that side? Okay. Seems like they haven't been able to find one, one of the arms, you see. 
I laughed dry dryly how pathetic I was for considering the arm flopping down rolling by my feet to be such a bad omen. Maybe you should take it as a bad omen, because I'm starting to. Both Raina and Mion knew how sickening that incident was. So they pretend that they didn't know. I looked it up all by myself. And shamefully enough, I was scared. You're pathetic, Keiichi Maibara. Alright, Reina. Let's do this in one go. Ready? And? Whoa. We did it. We did it, Keiichi-kun. Yay! The right time to give three chairs. That moment of two days of work bearing fruit. He who was brought to Hinamazawa covered in filth to meet his end. Instead, we were able to welcome him back. You're pretty lucky, Colonel Sanders. Your new master is a pretty decent person. Well, I'm certainly hoping that's the case. Because you seem decent. But I still have a lot to learn about you. Like why you moved here, for example. Uh, Colonel Sanders... He really is cute! It didn't matter that he was dirty. Rena nuzzled him cheerfully of her cheek. I was dead tired, but seeing Rena's happy face made it all worth it. I'll help, I'll help you carry it back. It'd be bad if it gets dark. Yeah, right. I really want to thank you, Keishi-kun. I won't forget this. Think real hard about what you'll do to repay me, okay? Well, I wonder what kind of repayment. I wonder. For now, I just hold back my evil cackle. We were ready to take it to her house, but we couldn't go like this. We rolled the statue up in the tarp and lifted him. And so Jack and Jill went down the hill, carrying a human-sized bag and an unsheathed axe. I prayed that we wouldn't run into Tomotaki-san. If he saw us here and took a picture, we'll need to get rid of him. Lol. Is that meant to be a warning for an outsider like me? Something struck me as odd about the words Tomotaki-san about the words Tomosagi-san, unable to grasp my sense of humor, and left behind. Well, clearly he feels that this place is a very close-knit community, if nothing else. Perhaps a bit too close-knit. He received new tips. What kind of name is Reyna? Alright, I think I'll just go ahead and view what this new tip is before we call it a night. What kind of rain what kind of name is Reyna? Well, it's not knowing how you why you moved here, but I mean hey, maybe we can learn a little bit more about your name. Raina's not here. Do you know where she is, Keiichi? Huh? She was just there, actually. Hey, Mion. Where'd Raina go? Raina? Didn't she go to the bathroom? She did say she's been having bowel troubles lately. I haven't heard anything about that. Satoko, do you know where Raina went? Raina, you say? I just passed her in the hallway. Reyna has class duties today, so she's off to water the flower bed. Ah, it was Reyna's turn for class duty. That's very much appreciated. Reyna, Reyna. Upon hearing it repeated, a thought came to mind. It's rude to say this about someone's name, 
but it was a weird name. It was like some foreigner's name. What kind of name is Raina, I wonder? What kind of kanji does her name use? Raina is her nickname. She has a proper name as well. What? Really? I was sure that Raina Ryugu was her full name. Well... I can understand you making that mistake since we only call her Reina. She even signs her name as Reina. It's like her real name in school. I wonder what her real name is. Let's ask her when she comes back. Satoko and Rika-chan looked at each other. You don't need to ask her. We'll tell you what it is. It's the Ray from Ore and the Na from Nara. Her real name is Reina Ryugu. Reina, is it? Rihanna. Hmm. So it's read out as, Re as, as Reina instead of Reina? It's pretty interesting reading. No, that's not it. Rihanna, Rihanna is the correct way. Reina told us that she wanted us to call her Reina, so we call her Reina. Keiji Chan, Keiji, Kei Chan. Reina is Reina, you know. Only strange strangers call her Reina. You get where this is going? Understood what Mion was saying. It didn't matter what her real name was, only what names we used between us. Reina Ryugu is Reina. She's nobody other than that. So I was thinking, if I had a nickname, would you call me that by, by that? If it's good. So what do you want to be called? Con Man. Reina then came back into the classroom. One of the juniors near the door told Reina people were looking for her. What's this now? Who is looking for me, I wonder? I wonder. Seeing that, both Mion and I sneered. Bailiff, Ryuga doth show herself! Con man, you're quite sinister. Ha ha ha! What is this? What is this? Keiji kun and Michen are evil bailiffs? A con man? Damn you, Reina so Re Reina, Reina no Suke Ryugu! Today doth be when thou meet this thy maker! Have at thee! Wah! Wah! Suki san, Kaku san, show them what for! Aye aye, sir! I expect my fee to be paid to my Swiss bank account. Since it's come to this, we have no choice. We'll just have a grand battle with five people. Reina's fierce punches exploded in the proper timing and take out the seal. The evil that was me on and myself was vanquished in the end. I do hope that Reina does go on a journey to make the world a better place. How about heading to Nag Nag Nagatacho? My destination is decided by where the cute stuff gathers. Why? Well, yeah, I guess it would be. I'll be sure to make a mental note of that, just in case. The toll of the bell signaled that break time was over. Come on, Keichi kun Mi-chan. The teacher's coming. I took Reina's hand and stood up. It was just as the teacher had entered the classroom. Just one more hour. And oh man. Gotta buckle down for one more. Okay, so...
Your name is spelled Ray, Ray with an R-E-I and Na, but everyone just takes out the I and just calls you Reyna. I guess it's better than nothing, not learning anything about you this episode, but still, I think given that information, it's kind of trivial. Anywho, I think I'll just go ahead and cut things off here. And I guess we can uh, figure out what the hell we're going to do next in the next episode because, well, Colonel Sanders is free, so I don't know what the fuck else I'm supposed to do other than play more games with the club. I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of Higurashi When They Cry. If you, if you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all next time. Take care.